the state of Florida is completely turned on its head is Florida State. 0-3, getting a loss here to Memphis, 20-12. to This was one of those games where, I mean, to, to just perfectly depict how we were sitting there watching the games. We were watching the Alabama-Wisconsin game, then we were flipping between that and the LSU-South Carolina game. And this game was kind of just in the corner on the quad box on Young Zumo. And we just kept kind of peering over, and it's like, huh. That's a really bad throw by DJU. I guess we're kind of just used to this now. Oh, okay. That's just a really messy, bad defensive play where nobody's trying. And here we are. They're 0-3 with two ACC losses and a loss to what's probably going to be the best G5 team. We're going to talk about that next, by the way, the G5 landscape. I don't know what Florida State does. Like, I don't know where you go from here. I think that Mike Norvell is a great coach, but I think that he needs this as a reset on figuring out how he's going to continue to build his rosters. If they don't improve in high school recruiting and they overly emphasize recruiting through the portal next cycle, I am immediately raising the red flag on what Florida State is going to do in, oh, it's a big run by Trevor Etienne. Ooh, big run by Trevor Etienne. Uh, I am raising the red flag of what Florida State's future is going to be like with Norvell because one thing has been extremely apparent, the way that he structured this team is not indicative of productive, consistent winning football. I have never seen a bigger 180 from, oh, from two teams. It is a hideous transition from last year's Florida State team that looked like a real competitive team that if if uh, Jordan Travis stayed healthy, could cause some problems down the stretch. Mm. They had big earned wins against Clemson. I don't think, th I don't see anybody on this schedule that's going to be a big win for them right now. It is an ugly performance to go out and drop 12 points against memphis yeah. it's uh, the first two games were hideous boston college is a little bit better than we expected sure georgia tech may be a little bit better than we expected sure but coming off of last year and all the bitching and moaning they did and now they're zero and three uh, that's are you kidding crazy me? ironic are, that, that is, that's a whole that, it, thing you talked all that talk and last year it was it was making sense right? i like for by the way i like florida state fans i love that some of my the the best viewers that we have on rufino and joe show are florida state fans uh it, it, it they're great football fans this sucks for them and it sucks like i kind of agreed that they'd be better off leaving the acc but to what you're saying here it's just painfully ironic yeah it's a, to have this be the year another prove it year because if you're going to do this complaining you have to consistently prove it year after year yeah. it can't just be oh strike while the iron's hot no there's a lot there's millions and millions of dollars involved here striking while the iron is hot is not how these legislators do this stuff uh so going out and starting zero and three with three garbage ugly losses who's who do you think's angrier right now as a fan? The Florida fan or the Florida State fan? The Florida State fan, because I think that the Florida fan, I think most Florida fans are kind of rooting for the Billy Napier thing to end. Any way that, that he would have bought himself time, I think most Florida fans were realizing that he was not going to be the guy to get them to success. So buying time would have just continually delaying the inevitable. Florida State, you had this guy that you just gave a huge extension to that was rumored to be a part of the Alabama coaching search. And now he has gone in the complete opposite direction. He has regressed back to the Jacksonville state loss season where they were embarrassingly bad. I, I don't where I'm saying with this. And I think it's really key to say is like, I have no idea where this goes because I have never seen a team completely fall apart and collapse from being 12 and 0 to 0 and three to start the year against good teams but not elite teams that they faced i think with florida state we were talking about it earlier uh watching the game the downfall they're paying for the downfalls of nil uh consistently for this year because you make a big investment to bring dju in and you kind of are handcuffed to playing him because of the, the the monetary investment compared to guys you may not that that would be better uh it's a weird dynamic that i think is going to keep getting worse and this isn't fear-mongering it's just how it's going to go where do the dollars and the wins meet uh because you're hoping everyone that's donating is hoping hey you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm paying for this guy to get in i want to see him play i want them to win but then as a coach what if he's not the best guy what do you do then are you are you almost sabotaging the team by trying to appease the donors it feels like we're going to meet a really messy road eventually 
where a, one coach decides to stand up and say, I know you brought this, we, you paid for this to get this guy. We're appreciative. He's not working for us. He's not playing. That could get that because that could become very messy for a program. It's one of the, I think one of the overlooked fears from this NIL uh, situation and development.